over the years, I've been hauling uh, motorcycles in the back of my pickup truck for a lot of miles and a lot of time, probably two or three decades. Uh, and I thought I'd make a simple video to just kind of talk about some of the different ways you might approach setting up your truck uh, to uh, haul motorcycles. Uh, the picture that shows a uh, kind of typical range of motorcycles I made haul, you know, dirt bike, uh, sport bike, and then a sport tour. If you're riding a Goldwing or a Chopper or something like that, I don't and have never owned those kinds of bikes, so I really can't help you with how to how to do that. Uh, the first thing I'll cover uh, also to not discuss is the whole trailer versus using your truck to haul with. Okay, uh, I got a trailer. I get it. I get the advantages of it. I you know I use it sometimes for certain things. Uh, this is really meant to just address the fact that you know when you want to haul in your truck, how you might set things up. Uh, so the bed of my truck is set up with E-Track. Uh, the chocks are set in there. They're roll-in chocks so that what I can do in particular, and this is handy when I have uh, two bikes I want to haul, I can roll a bike in. Uh, it will stand up in the chock uh, while I tie it down. Uh, since I'm mostly doing uh, the loading, unloading of bikes alone, uh, this is a critical thing for me. Uh, so the left chock is a Condor chock. And the right chalk is a Condor clone chalk. It's called a Rack A44. Both are mounted to the E-Track using Condor uh, mount plates. Uh, the mount plate for Condor, as well as all the Condor accessories, work on the Rack A44 uh, clone chalk. Uh, the point of having E-Track is it enables me to move the, tr the chalk to the left, to the right, whatever placement I want. And it also enables me to move these tie down points to the left, to the right, uh, whatever place I want. You see also that I use these two by four standoff fixtures for E-Track. Uh, I use them for tie down points. I also use them to prevent things from sliding around the bed. I just use them as kind of standoffs. So that's the, the way my truck is set up. Many people don't want to put an E-Track. Uh, if you, frankly, if you don't have Utilitrack, you could take a sheet of ply, mount your E-Track to that and uh, do the same thing uh, with the weight of bikes on it. It's not gonna move around. Uh, but the other way you can do this is uh, by simply making a skid. So this is what I call a, a chalk kind of skid. The l farthest left and right slots and the center slot are set up to be the width of a motorcycle wheel and they're set up so that the front to back spacing of the slot is such that when you put a tire in it, the tire does not hit the ground be, uh, beneath. So the tire sits on the edge of the front and back of this, and that pins the chalk to the ground with the weight of the front of the bike. Uh, you simply take some eye bolts, uh, you make uh, tie down points. So when you're tying down two bikes in the back of the truck, the question is always how to get a center tie down point. This is a simple, cheap, easy way to get some of the benefits of a chalk uh, while basically getting a tie down point and to, uh, you know, uh, make it so you can tow stuff and uh, you can put two bikes in the bed of your truck uh, with less worry. Um, like I said, this thing, I probably made this 20, 30 years ago, and it just sits around. Every once in a while, I might use it in the truck. Uh, like, uh, I have a uh, F-250 uh, uh, Super Duty that, you know, uh, isn't set up the way my Titan is set up. So I'll throw this in it and use that to uh, hold things. Other people will use these floor chocks. Uh, the left chalk is a Baxley chalk. The right chalk is a clone. And what they'll do is just take these floor chocks put them in the bed, uh, put them against the front wall, and then when you roll the bike in and tie the uh, bike to the uh, uh, truck, uh, the chalk is pinned against the front wall and the wheel cannot move left, right. Uh, since these are roll-in chocks, again, you have the benefit that uh, when you're trying to tie the bike down, you can just roll the bike into the chalk and it will actually stand up uh, while you're uh, tying it down. So you don't need to worry about putting it in a side stand or anything else. Just makes it easier. Uh, the other feature I'll show you, uh, these are my favorite floor chocks. And the reason they're my favorite floor chocks is because of the way Baxley's design works. So what you see is the cradle for the chalk has fingers. And when I move the cradle forward to its closed position or, its, or its, uh, when a bike's in it, you see the fingers close up and basically that grips, the rocker grips the tire in the front and rear, which basically makes the bike more stable. 
It makes it less tip prone and just does a great job of holding the bike upright. And then when you're trying to pull it out, the fingers expand, making it easier to roll the bike in and out. So the clones, which have this feature, uh, are typically available for about a third of the price of uh, the Baxley, uh, and they work equally as well. They're just not as well constructed, uh, but they have the, the finger set up that merely helps you load and unload one of these chocks easily. Okay, so that's if you want to use a chalk, you don't have to use a chalk. I've towed with the, the bike uh, with its uh, front wheel in the corner of the bed. Uh, I've strapped them down straight to the red wall. Um, it's just something that if you want a little extra security, a little extra convenience, uh, you can use a chalk uh, and you can uh, make it a little bit easier yourself. But let's talk about loading the uh, bikes into the truck. So I use these aluminum ramps. They're 130, 150 bucks a pair. Uh, and uh, what I do is I set up one ramp to walk on and I set up one ramp for the bike to uh, drive on. I start the bike, I put it in gear, I use the clutch and the gas and I feather it up uh, rather than pushing it. It just makes sense to me to use the power. I'm a short old guy. Uh, for me, pushing a 500 pound bike up a ramp, uh, that's just not a good, good thing to do. And frankly, a little technique goes a long way. If you just use the clutch and the, the gas, uh, you can get into a, a truck pretty easily, uh, especially if you practice it over and over again. Uh, in the background, what you see is a ready ramp. So these are uh, bed extenders uh, slash ramps. So it's a bed extender that turns into a ramp or a ramp that turns into a bed extender. Very nice piece of kit. Um, really sturdy, really well made, uh, weighs quite a bit uh, and does a really nice job. These lock to the truck uh, with a set of straps that basically uh, the bottom strap has a nub on it and what that does is it fits into the, the tail, tailgate latches on the tailgate and then the upper strap uh, loops over the uh, post for the tailgate uh, and then uh, pulls the ramp towards the truck uh, towards the truck and so that that way it's secured to the truck and is a bed extender. Uh, since I like using two ramps I figured out how to use two of these aluminum ramps and tie them together and make them a bed extender. Uh, so what this does is whenever you have multiple bikes in a bed or even one bike, you find that uh, your bed space becomes at a premium if you really are trying to haul stuff. So having a tailgate extender uh, and a way to uh, store your ramps is a really good idea. Ready Ramp had it right. Uh, this is an adaptation of their idea um, in a uh, redneck kind of homemade way. So what you do is you just buy a J-hook with a big fender washer and a wing nut. You take that and what you do is you hook the J-hook onto the beam of the ramp. And then you take the wing nut and the washer uh, through an appropriate hole in the ramp uh, and you bolt it together. Two of these sandwich the two uh, back parts of the ramps together, making them act as one. And then using the same tie down setup as the ready ramp, uh, basically you lock the, uh, the whole assembly into the, uh, into the uh, tailgate and bed of the truck. So this is a ready ramp. This is one of their pieces that they use to uh, go into the latches of the tailgate. Uh, so they have an upper strap that they use. Uh, you can use their pieces or you can uh, come up with your own way of doing that. Uh, but it's effective. Uh, I've tried it uh, over uh, some pretty high speeds uh, this year alone. Uh, I probably have, doing this hauling setup, I probably have 30,000 miles of towing uh, using, these, uh, ramp, uh, using these ramps as a bed extender and fixing them the way they were. And they're, they're, they're totally stable, safe. Um, and then the other piece is, lastly, of course, because I'm not the... I'm, I'm the kind of cheap guy. Uh, this setup costs about half of what a ready ramp costs. It's lighter, uh, it fits my purposes better, and it's cheaper. Okay, the last piece I'll talk about is, uh, I know everybody, not everybody likes the idea of feathering their clutch and running their bike and using that to run it up a ramp. So Condor makes wheel attachments for their chocks. Uh, this is a homemade version of what they make. And those wheel attachments basically attach the side uh, to the bottom of the chalk, and they provide a toe point, a point so that you can attach a winch to the chalk. And once 
and with these tie down points, once you tie the bike down to the chalk, uh, the front wheel, you can basically use a winch to pull that up the ramps and into the bed of the truck. Uh, so this is my dead bike recovery system. I keep this in my truck at all times. If I come upon a dead bike, and I've tested with a bike of 600 pounds on my ramps, uh, not the most stable thing, but certainly worked and, uh, you know, with a little care, it works. Uh, you use a 12 volt uh, portable winch, hook it to the front of the truck bed, and then basically just uh, pull the bike up the ramps and into the bed. Uh, and then tie it down. So that's a simple way to do a recovery. Um, I think if you really were not a fan of using power to uh, and clutch and gas to uh, um, power your bike up into the bed of the truck, you probably could make this winch setup uh, much more normal and use this uh, kind of winch setup to load bikes into the back of your truck too. Uh, me personally, uh, if, the, if the bike runs, uh, I don't see any reason to be using my leg. I'd prefer to use technique. So I hope this has uh, helped you. Uh, just think about different ways to uh, solve your uh, truck uh, motorcycle towing uh, setups. Um, there are 20 million ways to skin a cat. They are uh, equally effective. Uh, there are trade-offs between all of them. And, uh, you know, there's not there's some wrong ways to do it. Uh, but there are a million right ways, and uh, hopefully this is giving you some ideas on different right ways. Thanks for watching. Take care.